This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. You know, the great thing about God is no matter how many mistakes you've made in the past, you don't have to keep making them. And the more we choose the right thing, the more we get out of the messes that we're in. Everybody has emotions. Well, at least most people do. Some people you think could use having a few more, but um, we're going to start with the people who just have an abundance of them and they tend to be led and guided by them rather than being guided by the Spirit. So our emotions do not tell us the truth. <laughs> they tell us how we feel. Your mind doesn't necessarily tell you the truth unless it's been totally renewed by the Word of God. Your mind and my mind tells us what we think. And so probably more than anything else, people tell me and they tell you and when you're talking to each other, you talk about and I talk about what we want, what we think and how we feel. <laughs> I want, I think, I feel. Well, interestingly enough, all of that, unless it's closely guided by the Holy Spirit, is part of what the Bible calls the flesh. What I think doesn't necessarily tell me what God thinks or what His Word says. What I feel doesn't necessarily tell me what God would have me do in a situation. And what I want may not be what God wants. Now, we improve in those areas the more we study the Word and the more we learn to walk according to the Word. But I can tell you, even after being in church many, many years back in the 70s when I got into what I call a more serious relationship with God, and I love to talk about that because to be honest, you can be a Christian and you can go to church a couple times a week and you might read your Bible a little bit and still not be real serious in your walk with God. When people get serious about their relationship with God, they're not just interested in what God can do for them, but they're interested in what they can do for God. They want to be the kind of person that God can use, that God is working through them to help other people. You know, I love doing things for my kids and I will always do things for my kids. But I'll tell you, I reached a point where I just thought, I'd like you to do something for me. Uh, and you'll get to, now all my kids are great and they do a lot of stuff for us, but it's just the truth. You don't, you know, that baby stage of Christianity is all about me, 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 me. What can you do for me? But maturity begins to see that it has a responsibility and it begins to want to know what it can do then for the one who's helped them so much. So the Bible says that we have emotions, we have thoughts, we have a will, and what God's desire is for us is that we use our will to choose His will. He's not going to make us do what's right. He's given us free choice because He doesn't want robots who have no choice but to serve Him. He wants us to come to the point where we can even say, you know, God, this is what I want, but if it's not what you want, then please don't give it to me. Has anybody started praying like that yet? Okay, that's the wise way to pray. And, and we also grow to the point where even though we have our own thoughts and we have our own feelings, we know that we can't be led and guided by that if they don't agree with the Word of God. So let me just say that you're never going to not have feelings. You're going to have feelings. You're going to have emotions. And sometimes they're good and sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're there when you need them. They do, or they're there when you need them. Sometimes they're there when you... They're there when you want them. Sometimes they're there when you don't want them. You may feel like doing something when you go to bed at night, get up the next morning and not feel like doing it anymore. And so we have to learn that we have feelings, but we cannot let them have us. There's a difference. We have to learn how to manage our emotions. And because emotions are so prevalent, I read and study in that area a fair amount. And I recently have been reading a book by a gentleman who's 
probably gone home to be with the Lord 100 years ago. But I love the fact that the word never gets old. Matter of fact, a lot of the most important things I've learned, I've learned from people that left the planet years and years and years ago. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to write so many books and leave that legacy and that heritage to people that will come after me because I know that the things that I'm teaching now will be just as valuable 100 years from now as they are right now. And so... But one of the things that this man said, and it's not anything that I don't know, but it just was something that I needed to be reminded of. And maybe you need to be reminded of this too today. He said, watch your emotions and notice how easily they are affected by so many different things. If you don't sleep well, you're likely to be more emotional the next day. If you don't feel well, you're likely to be more emotional the next day. If the weather doesn't suit you, <laughs> my point is, is that things that people do or don't do can affect us emotionally. How other people behave can affect us emotionally. What kind of appreciation people give you or don't give you can affect us emotionally. So because our feelings seem to be so affected by so many different things, I think it would be just a good little study class to take a week and just maybe pay a little bit of attention to when they're up and when they're down and what seems to be causing both. Some people are more emotional than others. Some have, you know, more control over their emotions than others. They say that women are a lot more emotional than men. You know, that's true in mine and Dave's case. It's not always true in every situation. What God wants us to do is learn to live deeper. Everybody say deeper. Because the flesh, what I think, what I want, and what I feel is more part of my exterior life, and it doesn't really or doesn't have to have that much to do with my deeper life, which is my life in Christ. But it takes us quite a while to learn that. How many of you, if you've been walking with God now, let's say 10 years, you are less affected by your circumstances now than you were 10 years ago? Okay, see, and the longer you walk with God, the more that's going to be the case. You know why? Because although you, you are a spirit, you have a flesh, which is your soul and your body. The Bible tells us that if we walk by the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. It doesn't say that the flesh will stop screaming at you, but it says the more that we walk in the Spirit, Galatians 5, 16, the less we will follow or submit to the lusts of our flesh. Your flesh is always gonna be screaming at you, I was going to be screaming at me, but we can make decisions that we're going to do what God wants us to do. Now, deeper. <laughs> the Bible says to be rooted deep in God's love. Do you know you can come to a place where you are so convinced that God loves you that nothing can ever take that away from you? Nothing can take that away from you. But how many years of my life, and perhaps in yours too, and thankfully I don't do this anymore, but how many years of my life did every time I have trouble that was long lasting, I would say, well, God, don't you love me? <laughs> don't you love me? You know, we think that if God loves us, then everything should turn up roses all the time. But the Bible actually says that when God chastises us, it's a sign of his love. In Revelations, it says we should be enthusiastic and full of zeal when God corrects us and shows us what's wrong with us. I don't know about you, but I've thought sometimes, God, you could just love me a little bit less today. I really, I, I don't want to know anything else that's wrong with me right now. Just be, feel free to go love somebody else. Amen? But when, you, when you're rooted deep in that love, then you know that you know that you know and nothing can ever take that away from you. It, the Bible says that we're to be rooted and grounded in Christ. And that means that you grow to a point where you, you, your identity is so established in who you are in Christ that although you don't wanna be rejected, if a person rejects you, you can still be okay because you know God never rejects you. 
If you get turned down for a position at work that you wanted or a promotion you wanted, you don't have to feel insecure and feel like you're no good because you can go back to your relationship with God and say, if that was what God had for me, then it would have happened. And if it didn't happen, then God's got another plan for me and my worth and value is not tied up in the title I have at my company. I think one of the best things that happens as a result of our relationship with God is that we can become secure in who we are in Him. Do you know what a nightmare it is when you're insecure and everything about how you feel about yourself is affected by how other people treat you and what your circumstances are? The Bible says, deep calleth unto deep. Now, I want to just ask you a couple of questions. How many of you maybe are at a point in your home where you need to do some deep cleaning. <laughs> okay, we're gonna talk about that for a minute. <laughs> and we're gonna get a little analogy. So are you the kind of person that just, when somebody's gonna come over, you just quickly straighten up? <laughs> oh, this is a good example. Oh, we got company coming. Come on. All the kids have to get in gear. We're throwing everything in closets. We're shoving everything in drawers. We're picking everything up. The dishes are thrown in the dishwasher. And the company comes in, and we're busy, like, impressing them with our lovely house. But we know what's hidden behind the drawers and the doors. Okay, well, you know what? The same thing can be true in our lives. When somebody comes around that we know and we want to impress, are we quick to straighten up? Or have we invited God to come into our life and do a lot of deep cleaning on the inside of us? Hmm. You know, well, let's just say this. If you would behave at home all the time, the way you would behave if I showed up at your front door? <laughs> Come on, wake up, I'm tired too. <laughs> See, our big excuse is, well, I just can't help it. I just can't help it. I just lose my temper. I'm just an emotional person. I just can't help it. <laughs> That's one excuse that we need to get rid of, the I can't help it excuse. It's just hard. It's just so hard. Well, yeah, it's hard for everybody. We all just think being out of control is great, but that's not the way God wants us to be. So... You know, I did a lot of screaming and yelling at my kids in my frustrated years. I mean, I, I wasn't abusive to them, but I just was, I was upset a lot, you know, all the time. I know none of you were like that, but I was. I always said I got along with everybody until somebody came home, and then it was a different story. <laughs> and honestly, I had this happen to me one time, and it taught me a great lesson, and I share it often in my teachings when I'm teaching along these lines. One day I was upset with my kids and they'd made a mess and, you know, back then I would say, go play and then they'd get their toys out and I'd say, clean that mess up. <laughs> so people that are unhappy inside, they're kind of led by their emotions and they blame a lot of their unhappiness on other people. Like, I'm going to be happy now if you go play. Well, now I'm going to be happy if you clean your mess up. And so I was having one of my upset spells and the doorbell rang, and I peeked out, and it was my pastor. <laughs> I tell you what, I got control of myself so fast. <laughs> I mean, I still remember, well, pastor. Wow, it's so nice of you to stop by. Oh, the kids, oh yeah, they're playing. They're, you know, the little darlings, they're just in their room playing. 
And you know what? It's amazing when there's somebody around that we want to impress how fast we can get control. <laughs> well, that would be worth you coming if that's all I said. But I'm going to say some other stuff. Because you know what? Until we take responsibility and stop just saying, well, that's just the way I am. I just can't help it. You know, we've all got excuses, but all they are is reasons stuffed with a lie. They're not the truth of God's word. And God has given us a spirit of self-control. And it may take a while to get it developed and to learn how to walk in it. But there's no point in me or you or anybody else saying, I just can't help it because God is never going to tell us to do or not to do something and leave us without the ability to do it. We cannot have spiritual maturity if we don't learn how to live deeper in God. And what that means is we don't, we have feelings, but we don't live by them. We have thoughts, we don't live by them. We have things we want or don't want, but we don't live by them. I think too many of us, we're going to church all the time trying to find a way that we can get what we want, and that's not exactly God's plan for our lives. Amen? What if I said to you today, and I will just pretend, because I would never say this, because you'd probably never come back if I did. But, <clears throat> so we'll just pretend that what if I said to you today, you know, uh, the things that you want in your life, you're never going to get them. So will you love God just as much and serve him anyway? <laughs> I think that's a question we all need to ask ourselves. Am I serving God for what he can do for me? Am I just willing to serve him when I'm on the mountaintops in my life? Or am I willing to serve him when just nothing in my life is making sense? And I see other people getting what I want, and I don't think they're nearly as spiritual as I am. And so I don't know why God is not giving it to me and giving it to them. Well, it may be that attitude that he's after. Why are you giving it to them, God? They're not nearly as spiritual as me. I am so spiritual. <laughs> All right. Romans 8, verse 8. So then, those who are living the life of the flesh, and I like the Amplified Bible, obviously, I've used it for years. Those who are living the life of the flesh, catering to the appetites and impulses are of their carnal nature. So, he's saying that living the life of the flesh means that we cater to our flesh, whatever it wants, that's what we try to give it. Now, I don't know if you have ever hosted a catered event, but it's so much fun when the event's going on. I mean, you got all kinds of people waiting on you. You know, you go to a, a really like top-notch restaurant, you might have three waiters or waitresses that are just assigned to your table. I mean, every time you get a crumb on the table, they're coming and wiping it up and Anything you want, they're going to get it. Uh, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. They know your name. I mean, it's just awesome. But you know what? You will get the bill. <laughs> Come on. And maybe some of you are in a place right now where you've gotten the bill <laughs> for catering to your flesh in the past. And God wants you to know that that can turn around so you're not continuing to pay that price in the future. You know, the great thing about God is no matter how many mistakes you've made in the past, you don't have to keep making them. And the more we choose the right thing, the more we get out of the messes that we're in. Yes, we all have emotions and they will dictate our lives if we let them. But did you know you don't have to just let them roll over you? Be secure in who you are in Christ. 
and declare the truth of God's word every day. When you do that, those emotions, those feelings, they don't have to run your responses to everything. They don't have to rule you. Joyce has a great book called Living Beyond Your Feelings. I love that. It's living beyond those feelings. And we're offering it to you today because this is something that so many of us don't even realize that we have a little bit of control over this, that we don't just have to let everything that we feel run over our day. So when you understand what the Word of God says about how to handle your feelings, everything changes. And when you get this book from Joyce, we're also going to throw in a really cute little mug that I think you'll enjoy having your coffee in in the morning. Um, it's We call it the Be Yourself mug, but I'll just throw it out there. It has a really fun little message that you're going to love for yourself or maybe for someone else too. So reach out today, get this offer, and stop letting your feelings run your life. Turbulent, transformational, lonely, exhausting, and clarifying are some of the words that could be used to describe last year. It was quite a year indeed, and I don't think there's anyone that would disagree with the fact that it was trying, it was difficult. And for us at Joyce Meyer Ministries, 2021 was a year like none other. Coming up, I'm going to share some stories that God did some amazing things. You are going to want to hear these. God did some really incredible things and we want to share it with you. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. The Joyce Meyer Conference is back. If you will start crying out to God on a regular basis, I need more of you in my life. You better put on your seatbelt and get ready for the ride of your life. Coming to Atlanta, Georgia, July 29th and 30th. And Austin, Texas, August 19th and 20th with worship by Pat Barrett. For more information and a complete conference schedule, visit JoyceMeyer.org or call 1-866-C-JOYCE. I want to share a story with you. This is the story of one life, one person's life completely changed. Mary wrote this to us. She says, Joyce, I was abused emotionally in my childhood, used by the boyfriend, abused by the husbands I married. Within this year, my daughter abused me. At the senior center, I found a copy of your Bible study. God can heal my heart. You helped me find Jesus. I wanted to thank you. Stories like Mary's are the reason for everything that we do here at Joyce Meyer Ministries. One life at a time, discovering hope, freedom, and love. Because God gave all of us the amazing opportunity through Joyce Meyer Ministries to share this most important message. Take a moment and think about that. If you are a partner, you are a part of all of it. You help provide the means to share Christ with your family, your neighbors, and people all over the world. In 2021, 160,000 people that we are aware of gave their lives to Christ through our worldwide outreaches. Together, we shared the gospel in more than 100 languages through enjoying everyday life on TV, radio, and online. Joyce's teachings combined were viewed more than 100 million times on YouTube alone. With your support, we've translated Joyce's books into six new languages, bringing our total to 161. We've distributed more than a million and a half of Joyce's books full of the Word of God worldwide. Together, we encouraged and provided hope online, reaching more than 29 million people on social media alone last year. Here's one more example of why all of this is so very important. Judith wrote to us and said, I was in such despair and suicidal, but I turned on enjoying everyday life and it brought such hope and a change over my soul. I'm so grateful for the show today. It was a lifesaver, truly. Thank you. These are miraculous changes, and they're all because God is doing incredible things and because people like you partner with us. We're sharing the Word of God, and by meeting people's practical needs through feeding programs, medical and dental outreaches, anti-trafficking programs, and more, 
hearts are opened, and people receive the life-changing love of Jesus. Listening to her tell her story made it okay for me to be honest and tell my story. She speaks like she's talking to me, like she knows me. Your book, Healing the Soul of a Woman, has been a huge help and blessing to my to older thank daughter. God. Joyce helps me so but much. As I, study I was the word, suicidal. Joyce's but books have helped me. Joyce has had a great impact on my life. She, she probably saved my 48-year-old relationship. Joyce has been fighting for listening to the time. I love you, Joyce. I want to thank you for saving me with you. I accepted God yesterday through her, and I feel like a new person. You are an integral part of sharing God's Word beyond the borders of this ministry every day. And those efforts are never in vain. The gospel, God's Word, will not return void. With your financial support and God doing what only He can, Countless people now have new hope, and tens of thousands have a relationship with Jesus. I've given you a lot of numbers, but remember, it really all comes down to one life at a time. And one person is always worth the effort, because when you change a life, you're doing so much more. You're changing a family, a community, a destiny. Need a girl's trip? Register now for the Love Life Women's Conference, September 22nd through 24th in St. Louis, Missouri. Come on, register now and join us. Thank you so much for all you helped us to accomplish in 2021. God was so good to us and we could not have done it without your partnership. You know, it amazes me how God can do whatever he wants, but he chooses to let us be part of it because he knows how important it is to us. You see, sharing Christ and loving people one day at a time is what it comes down to with every single year at Joyce Meyer Ministries. We could look at this whole problem and say, it's too big, there's nothing we can do. But if instead we take it one day at a time, one need at a time, one person at a time, and we do it together, before you know it, amazing things have happened because God honors that. So we thank you. And if you're not a partner, what are you waiting for? We would love to welcome you into this big happy family that is just doing everything they possibly can to share Jesus and to help people in many, many ways. Through the teaching that you're seeing, through conferences, and also through physical outreaches, medical care, helping children around the world, and women who are marginalized. There are so many ways that you can make a difference, but you know what won't work? Sitting back and doing nothing. So we invite you to get up right now, go to the website, call us and join us as partners. And then when we look back at this year, when we look back at 2022, you can say, wow, I was a part of all of that. Thanks for being here. We love you all. We hope you have enjoyed today's program. Please contact us or visit JoyceMeyer.org to share your prayer request or partner with us in sharing Christ and loving people all across the globe. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.